We've got a whole lot of stuff here in front of us. What are we gonna try and do today? Today we're gonna try and kick some beer. Kick the beer? You know, that's something you do if you're, if you're a professional uh, establishment and you see all these kegs being cart around and you see taps and handles and stuff. Does that mean we can do it at home? Absolutely. Well, firstly, you need some equipment. We've got the uh, normal old uh, corny keg. So the corny keg has uh, two ports on the top of it. One of them is a gas port, one of them is a, a liquid or beer port. And they come in uh, mainly two different sizes. So this is a 19 litre keg and this one here is a nine litre keg. Where we come from, it's called a corny keg, but that's short for Cornelius keg. And in North America, they also call them Pepsi kegs. So the benefit of having this is you can actually open the, the lid right up and remove it. So you can clean all in under, under the top there. Um, you can also, you've got a nice big opening there so you can then get your hand down inside there and clean everything that's inside, all surfaces, including the bottom. The next thing is these uh, two ports on the top here. So you have one which is labelled out and one that's labelled in. So the one that's labelled out has a tube that runs all the way to the bottom of the keg. That's your beer line, so it always picks the beer up from the bottom of the keg. Um, this one here, was, which is a gas one, and it just has a short line that just sits in there, and that's the one that delivers the gas. What you want to do is make sure the first time when you buy a keg or every sort of three or four brews that you do, you want to completely undo these, take them apart and uh, clean out everything inside, make sure that there's no hot matter or anything that gets left inside them. It might take 10 or 15 minutes to pull them apart and put them back together, but it's much better than tipping 20 litres of beer down the drain. But there's some new choices. I see you've got some fancy ones here. So these ones here are, um, are called iKega um, and they make it easier if you be able to serve beer if you're on the go as well. So. You may already have a setup like this, or you, um, and you can then transfer your beer into these and take your beer to your friend's place for a barbecue, or if you're going on holiday for the weekend, you can take some beers to the batch or the crib. What's all the stuff hanging off it? Okay, so on this side here, we have like a mini regulator, um, and this is uh, generally just for serving your beer. So you'd have that set to your sort of low pressure, just enough just to push the beer from being inside of the keg up and out through the tap. And we're going to have one of these little CO2 canisters we're going to screw in underneath. Yep. I know that some of these also can take a uh, connector for a soda stream bottle, right? Yes. Yep. I have an, an issue with some of these taps that I've figured out so far, and that is that the issue is when I pour, it's too much foam. How do I solve that problem? Um, basically, when you pour a beer, you want to make sure that firstly you, you completely open the, the tap open, so it's a, it's a clear run for the beer to come out if you try and sort of push back on it at wall foam. Um, but the other thing is also making sure that your temperature and your pressure is right for, for pouring the beer. You get some fancy ones that also has a control flow tap on the actual tap, right? Yes, we don't have any of that here today, but I know we, we like to get them. Um, this is just the bigger version, and it's got three notches. What, what are these three? Just walk me through those. First one here is a, um, that's a pressure relief. So, uh, one golden rule with CO2 is to always make sure that uh, before you open any of your vessels that you've released all the pressure that's inside that keg. So to do that you can just pull on that and that will let any, any area out of it. Um, secondly then you've got, um, just like any other keg, you've got two ports. One is uh, beer and one is gas. The top one is, uh, is, is the beer or the product and the one that's on the slight angle is the gas. It's got little notches on. That, that's how I know about the gas. It's got little notches on the same in your corny. There's notches here on the side, so you know which one is the gas. Correct. Why keg and not bottle? Which, which one is better? Well, I think if you speak to any home brewer that's been home brewing for a wee while and bottling, they'll tell you that the worst part of, about making beer is uh, bottling it. Um, because there's a lot of uh, process involved. Um, firstly, you have to make sure your bottles are very clean. Um, and if you're doing 30 bottles, it takes uh, a really long time. Once you've bottled your beer, you then have to wait four weeks for the carbonation to happen, where um, when you're kegging and use CO2, um, it happens within uh, days. That's one of the key things that makes a big difference for us. We drink a lot of beer, so we want it carbonated pretty, pretty easy. Um, but carbonation is, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of a finicky thing. We need to know how to do it. What are my options to carbonate beer when I'm in a keg? So firstly you have your, your keg and then you need, uh, you need some CO2. Uh, we have a CO2 bottle here, which you can use. Um, 
and you can either hire them from a local um, gas uh, supplier or you can purchase a bottle and, and have it filled yourself. Um, the other option is the soda stream bottles. So they are uh, quite a good um, option. If you're just starting out and you're only doing a few kegs, you can get an adapter for these that um, hook, hooks up to a reg regulator. But it's an intimidating thing, having a big CO2 tank and I need regulators. I see we've got a couple of regulators. We've got the one on the CO2 tank, we've got this little baby one here. Um, help me out. Is it needed? Do we need a regulator? So you do need a regulator to make sure that the right amount of CO2 is coming out of the bottle or the source of the CO2 that you're coming from. And when you say right amount of CO2, because we, we're doing carbonation, we're doing dispensing, is that the same CO2? Uh, no, so they're two different things. Carbonating is actually putting the bubbles in your beer and then dispensing is just using enough CO2 to be able to pour the beer out of your tap into your glass. Different pressures? Absolutely. That means I need a regulator, I need to be sure what's going on there. Yes. If I want to dispense my beer, what's my pressure going to be? Uh, you want to be around about 12 to 14 psi at about 3 to 5 degrees. If I want to carbonate my beer, what would be my pressure? Uh, so you can carbonate at that uh, pressure as well. It takes uh, a bit of time. You might be looking at sort of um, four, five, six days to carbonate, but you can sort of put your pressure up to about 20, 25 if you want to. Um, there are methods that you can kind of shake your beer a little bit while it's uh, carbonating as well if you want to be serving the beer the next day if you've got people coming over and you want to share it. Important therefore is we've got our kegs, we've got our CO2, um, we need to dispense it afterwards. What are my options? What do I, what, because uh, I see some fancy taps and things here. Okay, so obviously, so you've got the iKega here, which is, um, you can get these in all sorts of shapes and sizes and they have different types of tapping equipment as well. So you've got a, a party tap there that you can use or also you have the bar tap uh, where you can have your CO2 here and your tap here and be able to dispense straight from there. The other option is if you're uh, starting to get really serious at home, you can um, have a kegerator. So we've got a kegerator over here. This one's got three taps on it and it's uh, essentially just a fridge. So you can just fit three kegs inside of there, hook up the gas and the beer taps and, um, and pour directly from taps. It'd be like having your own bar at home. The golden rule in any beer activity is? Is making sure that everything's clean. Keep it clean, exactly. So I've got some choices. I've got some gear that I, I know you put out for us. So first choice is we're going to have some good old plastic jug with boiling water, not hot water. Yeah. Always the best option is boiling water if you've got a good supply of, um, of boiling water. But if you can get water up around sort of 70 degrees, um, it can kill most bugs and you can do it quite naturally without having to add too many chemicals or, or uh, sterilizing agents. Yes, and your tap's not hot enough. That's important to remember. What are these? So these are some other options. So we've got um, PBW, which is a, uh, a caustic cleaner, and then your um, no rinse steriliser. Just help me out because as with everything in beer, there's a big difference between cleaning, sanitising and sterilising. Cleaning is removing all of the, uh, like any matter that's within or, or stuck on the surfaces of the whatever you're cleaning, so making sure that there's no foreign matter still there that can then grow bugs. Sanitising is um, using like a, a, a chemical that will create either a gas um, which then kills any bugs that are still left inside the keg. And the bugs we're talking about, you know, yeasts or, 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 or bacteria or something, it's still, still floating around. Yeah. And then sterilising? Sterilising is a really hot process which over 120 degrees Celsius. Which we don't really have to do. No, we don't really have to do that. So we start clean, we've got our cleaning materials. Um, I like this one. So in there we've got 70% uh, ethanol, um, but you can use sort of a bottle of vodka or something with high alcohol um, as an extra level of sanitisation to be able to spray all of your bits and pieces. Then we need some lines to transfer things. I see you've got opportunity. What, what are we talking about here? Generally you have um, two types of uh, attachments which go onto your kegs. One of them is the beer port, so that's generally black. And then you have the grey one, which is generally your, your gas one. So if we've got a, a hose here with two black ones on it, that's for um, transferring beer between different vessels. Also, we've got a, a, a normal piece of silicon tubing, um, which then we'll use to um, transfer beer from our plastic fermenter into our keg. 
And the other thing as well, if you've done quite a bit of dry hopping or you do a style like a New England IPA or something like that where there's potential that there's still going to be quite a bit of uh, hot matter, you don't want to end up with uh, too much of that in your keg because then you end up with a blockage. So you can uh, put one of these filters on there which um, will filter it as you fill your keg. Nice. So that means our beer can stay nice and, cl and clear. So all of this stuff that's here, you guys don't sell any of these, even though it's got your names on it, right? No, no, we don't. So ingredients is our uh, expertise, but it's not just using our ingredients. We want people to make sure that they can make the best beer possible with our product. And that includes um, how to treat the beer once they've finished making it. The good thing about the beer community is everybody has a plan. Everybody has gear. And we love gear, make no mistake about that. But it costs a lot of money eventually to do that. You don't need all of this, do you? No, you don't need all of the stuff. Um, the best way to go about it is basically get into brewing first, potentially do a bit of bottling and, and stuff like that first. And then um, as you evolve, then you can uh, kind of choose uh, whether you want to try something small like an eye kegger first or whether you want to uh, go with the 19 litre kegs or into a kegerator straight away. That's the beauty of it. You can um, you can spend as much money or as little money and um, get as flash or as uh, basic as you like to be able to make sure that you can pour the beer that you want from home.